Yeah, hi everyone. Welcome to the session on Kubernetes fleet management. My name is Mahindra Shinde and uh, the session is sponsored by Synergetics. Synergetics is solution partner with Microsoft and uh, here at Synergetics we explore uh, multiple different technologies, data AI, digital app innovation, infrastructure and many other different services. Synergetics learning services provide multiple different uh, uh, learning sessions for multiple technologies covering cloud, Kubernetes, Docker, DevOps, data, AI and so on. You can visit more or you can get more about us uh, if you just visit the website synergeticsindia.com. Now about me, my name is Mahindra Shinde, I am Microsoft Certified Trainer and my skill set include Cloud, Microsoft Azure, DevOps, in DevOps multiple different DevOps technologies including Azure DevOps, GitHub, GitLab, Jenkins and many other related technologies. I do conduct trainings for containers and Kubernetes as well. Kubernetes, it covers both in on-premise Kubernetes and the managed Kubernetes services as well. Uh, you can get more about more information about me and you can possibly contact me on my LinkedIn profile. The link is here in the presentation. Okay, that's about me. Let's continue about the agenda for this particular training session. So here we will have a quick introduction to what is Kubernetes, a quick overview of what is Kubernetes and then we will discuss what exactly is Azure Kubernetes Fleet Manager, why it is needed, why do you need a managed service to manage multiple Kubernetes clusters or instances, then what are the key features, what are the benefits, what are the different use cases where you can implement it, what is its architecture and then we will have a quick demo on how to use Azure Kubernetes Fleet Manager. So let's get started. The very first thing, the introduction to Kubernetes. Let us quickly have a quick overview of what is Kubernetes. Uh, so all those people who are attending this session or watching this session right now, uh, I assume that you have worked with Kubernetes a bit, you know Kubernetes cluster. So this is just an overview for you. So Kubernetes is a container orchestrator which is known for lot many different types of features or benefits like Kubernetes is cloud agnostic. You can deploy Kubernetes on multiple different cloud platforms or you can even run it on premise. Multiple cloud vendors provide their own managed version of Kubernetes where you do not have to work on or you do not have to manage the underlying infrastructure for your Kubernetes cluster and instead your cloud vendor will take care of the cluster resources infrastructure. So it's cloud agnostic work with multiple different cloud platforms. It's open source. It has a very big open source community who constantly providing lots of additional add-ons, extensions, etc. for Kubernetes. So possibly you can uh, explore some of the extensions on artifacthub.io. Uh, it's like a search engine where you can find lots of add-ons for your Kubernetes cluster. Add-ons for monitoring Kubernetes cluster, add-ons for uh, third-party uh, extensions like for example an add-on that let your Kubernetes cluster consume Azure Blob or Azure File Share or Amazon S3 bucket as a volume and so on. Kubernetes has self-healing capabilities for the user workload. So if your application goes down because of any reason, there are ways Kubernetes will, you know, restart your application, redeploy the pods and bring it online again. Kubernetes provides scalability for both workload and the nodes. For the workload, you have manual scaling and you have auto scaling. You can probably use HPA, horizontal pod auto scaler to do that. Uh, for node scaling, yes, you can scale the nodes manually and if you are using managed Kubernetes cluster, something like AKS, then the vendor, the cloud vendor will offer one more type of scalability for nodes, auto scaling for node, which is vendor specific feature. In AKS, you can set up node auto scaler that will, you know, increase or decrease number of 
worker nodes in your Kubernetes cluster based on a CPU threshold, for example. So, Kubernetes has many such features. Azure Kubernetes service, on the other hand, is a managed version of Kubernetes hosted on Microsoft Azure and it is available under multiple pricing tiers like free version of Kubernetes AKS. Free version of Kubernetes is designed for dev test and there is a production version of Kubernetes as well which provides high availability which is required for production cluster and SLA of course service level agreement that gives you an uptime guarantee from the vendor if you go with production version. There would be a minor charges will be applied uh, for that high availability and SLA. So in short, you do not have to set up Kubernetes cluster. You do not have to use the manual process of adding a node, worker nodes into a cluster. Most of these things will be managed by the vendor Microsoft. But remember when you deploy anything on cloud, you are basically following the shared responsibility model where some of the things will be managed by your cloud vendor but there might be some areas where you have to take some efforts or you have to implement the things. Your vendor will guide you on what you can do and what you should not do. There would be a best practices set, right, that you need to follow or that you should follow basically. So that's it about the Kubernetes uh, basically and most of you might be already aware of it if you are attending this session. Now, so what are the challenges? Now, this is the important part now. What are the challenges in having multiple Kubernetes clusters? Number one, cluster diversity. So what if you are a Kubernetes administrator and you have to manage more than one Kubernetes cluster? Each one of it may not be same. Diversity means one Kubernetes cluster might be using an older version and another Kubernetes cluster might be using a newer version. So things that work in one Kubernetes cluster may not work or may not be supported in the, another Kubernetes cluster. Another challenge you might face here is resource fragmentation. Not all Kubernetes clusters are over provisioned and not all of them are under provision. Over provision means you have provisioned a particular Kubernetes cluster to actually accommodate let's say 100 pods, but it's actually running just 10 pods. Then it is over provisioning. And opposite of that, let's say there is a Kubernetes cluster that has almost, you know, used up all the resources, right? And in order to improve performance of that particular application or workload, it actually requires scaling up, right? So you can have an overutilized or underutilized resources. When, when I say resource, I'm referring to the infrastructure, basically, the storage, CPU, RAM, etc and network bandwidth as well. So if you are managing multiple Kubernetes cluster, you will have this challenge as well. Another <coughs> very common challenge is configuration drift. Configuration drift is a very commonly, uh, you know, a common scenario. You set up initial Kubernetes cluster with certain features set, certain policies set, but over a period of time, you can observe some changes happening into it. Maybe like, one of your team member was trying to troubleshoot an issue in one of the Kubernetes cluster and in order to troubleshoot it, he or she made some minor changes to the Kubernetes cluster and you know what happened? This person, he or she forgot to revert back those ad hoc changes made to the cluster. Now the changes were permanently saved. Now the cluster state initially set and cluster state now are totally opposite or might have some changes over it. So your initial cluster configuration does not match with your current state of cluster. Solution, use some kind of desired state configuration, DSC or something like that, an automation tool that can handle it like that. So configuration drift is one of the major issues you will find. It's not just Kubernetes. If you are an infrastructure administration, system administration, operations team member, configuration drift can occur anywhere. Security and compliance, making sure that all the Kubernetes clusters that you are managing right now are secured, are following all the registered organization best practices or compliances that organization has set. You will have to verify, you will have to, you will have to keep the compliance status 
for all those Kubernetes cluster. High availability, ensuring high availability for the workload which is deployed on the Kubernetes cluster and the cluster itself, right? Monitoring and logging all the Kubernetes clusters. Okay, so monitoring is one very important aspect in here. Most of the time we use Kubernetes for dynamic workloads or workload like microservices where individual application or monolith is converted into multiple independent services and you have to manage all of them. So monitoring should be enabled for that. Most of the applications you deploy here would be stateless application which makes it easy to you know move from one instance to another instance or restart an instance or replace a failed instance with a new instance and continue the transaction. But troubleshooting such kind of environment or working in such environment requires a proper monitoring setup should be there. There should be an application to constantly monitor rather people now nowadays use monitoring tool that has built in AI artificial intelligence right that to support proper monitoring okay scaling and auto scaling would be another interesting feature here scaling refers to the manual scaling auto scaling means scaling based on certain trigger to set up a trigger so the scaling happens automatically on a certain event like cpu utilization goes beyond the threshold i want to deploy more instances like that okay so we have that application deployment how do you manage application deployments in it are you planning to do a manual application deployment where somebody has to connect to your Kubernetes cluster and deploy the things manually? Or what you can do is you can use some kind of CI CD pipelines to do the same thing. Okay. So you can have some kind of CI CD pipeline as well to do the same work. So in that case, your CI CD pipeline need to refer to a correct version of Kubernetes cluster correct Kubernetes cluster like there might be a different pipeline that will take your application to a dev cluster a different pipeline or maybe a stage to take it from dev to QA then from QA to staging from staging to production for example so application deployment managing application deployment across multiple clusters and the last point cost management if you are using cloud hosted cluster that you have to manage the cost Many a time it happens, I have observed it, you have a dev test cluster where you focus more on cost savings and you have a production cluster where your focus is more on performance. So the balancing might be different. The priority is cost if it is dev test cluster, but the priority is performance and availability if it is production cluster. So you have to balance them out somehow. So these are some of the challenges you might face in managing multiple Kubernetes clusters. Okay, so we discussed some of the challenges that we regularly face while managing multiple Kubernetes cluster. Let's proceed. So what basically is Kubernetes fleet manager now? Kubernetes Fleet Manager is a managed service from Microsoft Azure that allows you to manage multiple AKS clusters, multiple Azure Kubernetes service clusters from a single hub cluster or a single centralized management console, you can say. So Azure Kubernetes Fleet Manager enables multiple cluster at scale scenarios it creates a cluster that can be used to manage other member clusters. So what basically it's going to set up? It's going to set up a hub cluster and that hub cluster will manage all the other member clusters where your workload is deployed. Possible scenarios here include environment where you have, let's say for example, I'll just use a, uh, I'll just draw a diagram here, okay, to make it easier for you to understand. So, we are exploring a scenario where we have multiple Kubernetes clusters. Let's say, for example, you have one Kubernetes cluster for a particular workload, let's say application one, and this is dev cluster for application one. Then you have another one for the same application, let's say app one, but this one is QA cluster for app one. And then you might have 
another one, yet another one, which is basically a staging or pre-production for app one. So for a particular workload, let's say I have four different Kubernetes cluster for the same workload. This might be a dev, this might be a QA cluster, this might be a pre-production or staging and this might be a production cluster. So let me just rename this as production. Same way, let's say you have another workload, let's call it app2. And for app2 as well, you have a separate dev cluster, a separate QA cluster, independent QA cluster, and then a staging cluster for app2 and a production cluster for app2 as well. Okay. I'm just giving you an example. Your scenarios might be different. You may or may not have multiple different workload or you may have, let's say, for example, a dev cluster for app1 and app2 both, a QA cluster, single QA cluster for both app1 and app2, whereas staging and production, there would be independent clusters. Multiple different scenarios can be explored in here, like dev test clusters can be a common cluster for multiple workload, whereas production and pre-production or staging cluster might be dedicated for a single workload. So whatever way it would be, but you have multiple Kubernetes clusters to manage and you have to take care of configuration drip. All their configuration should remain fixed or whatever initial configuration you set for them need to remain as it is. Okay. So like for example, you might be using or you might be optimized, you might have optimized this dev and QA clusters for cost savings. Are you getting my point? So the main focus or the priority here for these clusters is let's say cost saving, whereas the production and pre-production will be optimized for high availability and performance. High availability, performance, security, etc. There would be multiple parameters in here. Okay. So their configuration might be different. Okay. And there are so many different clusters you need to manage. You need some kind of tool that will assist you in managing all those clusters together. Okay. And this is where Azure Kubernetes Fleet Manager comes into a picture. Okay. So let's go back here. So what are the supported scenarios? You can group multiple AKS clusters as a member cluster. You can create Kubernetes resource object on the fleet resource cluster and then control their propagation to all or a subset of all the member clusters. So what Kubernetes fleet manager basically do? Kubernetes fleet manager will deploy one more Kubernetes cluster here on the top. Now this is going to be called the hub cluster. Now the hub cluster is the cluster that will control all these other clusters and we call them member clusters. So all these clusters will become member of this central hub. Now what if I tell you there are two interesting features available in here, not two actually, there are three interesting features here. One, you can deploy your Kubernetes manifest or you can deploy your application initially to let's say this hub cluster okay you deploy them to hub cluster and from hub cluster they will be propagated to all these clusters this is resource propagation we will talk about little bit more about it in after few minutes okay so this is one feature you can have resources deployed application workload resources deployed to the hub cluster and then propagate them on the member cluster. There you can control like which member cluster to propagate them or select the cluster by certain label or certain criteria to propagate. Another feature you can implement here is load balancer. You can set up an Azure load balancer right on the cluster level that will divert the request across multiple member cluster. Okay. And the third feature which we have here is something related to cluster update. Okay. Cluster update. You can either update all the member clusters or you can update them by group. 
So one group will be updated now, second group will be updated later sequentially or group 1 and group 2 updated parallelly, right? So cluster 1 of group 1, cluster 1 of group 2 updated same time, then cluster 2 of group 1, cluster 2 of group 2 up they updated same time. They will run parallel or they can run sequential. So Kubernetes update. Here you will be updating either the Kubernetes control plane with worker node images or only worker nodes. Okay, these are the two options. Fine. Load balancing, version update are these two features, supported scenarios now. One interesting feature or one interesting fact about Kubernetes Fleet Manager is that Kubernetes Fleet Manager as of now is in a preview and Microsoft is planning to add lot many things, lot many other features in Azure Kubernetes Fleet Manager. If you want to know more about what is their roadmap and what all new features they will be adding up here, I will show you this. Azure Kubernetes Fleet Manager Roadmap. So Microsoft already has a roadmap created for Kubernetes Fleet Manager. Let me show you the publicly available roadmap from their official GitHub repository. So literally the project is open to general public. You can just go and check the progress, what Microsoft has made, whatever progress Microsoft has made on this preview feature. Let's wait for it. Uh, this is actually internally using a GitHub project for tracking and for agile management of this particular project. We will get a typical dashboard, agile dashboard or Kanban dashboard, you can say, uh, which will show you the progress, what all work is getting done right now, okay, or how much work Microsoft has uh, done on, on it right now, that you will get all the information, okay. <clears throat> so you can see here, <coughs> sorry. So this is the feature which is in a backlog. This is the planned feature and this is where they are currently working on. So these are the backlog items for them like AKS cluster declaratively from the fleet Kubernetes API. This is a very interesting feature. Personally, I'm waiting for them to, you know, finish this working on this feature and I can immediately go and try it out. What is it all about? It's like you create the fleet manager and then use declarative model create a template like inside a fleet manager you will create a template and say that I want four different clusters with this 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 configuration and all apply the configuration and fleet manager will create the cluster based on that template. So right now this feature is not available. Right now what you need to do is you need to create AKS cluster manually and then register it add it as a member inside the fleet that is what is now happening. Also they are going to add regional failover of the fleet cluster. They are going to provide service mesh add-on for multiple clusters, right? So no need to implement service mesh on an individual cluster. Implement it on the fleet hub, basically. East-West communication is currently planned. Resource propagation override is already planned. This uh, resource propagation work, but override feature is in backlog right now. Uh, soon they will be working on this AID identity federation and other features. And let's see what other features are there. Like these are the development features, workload orchestration. Okay, these are the things on the right. So there are a lot many things currently in a pipeline right now on a roadmap. So by the time final version of Kubernetes fleet manager is available on Azure, I believe there will be a lot of interesting features Microsoft is planning to add into it. Right now it is in preview, so things might change in future. Okay, fine. So let's talk about this right now. Uh, I have logged in into my Azure portal. Okay, Kubernetes Fleet Manager, you can access it from the search bar also. Let us search for fleet. You need to have Azure subscription. Of course, you can go with Azure free trial subscription. Right now I do not have anything here. Let's create a new fleet manager. When you hit the create button, uh, you will get a uh, a typical object creation resource creation screen you will notice it is in a preview so you won't get any SLA right now and Microsoft do not recommend this right now for any kind of production grade work fine let's give it a name let's call it my fleet one I'm planning to deploy this fleet on East US right now Microsoft 
uh, Kubernetes fleet manager is a regional service. So you have to select a region where you wish to deploy the fleet. But members, member cluster may, need not be from the same region. Member clusters from, uh, may belong to a different region as well. Another restriction is they must be from the same tenant. This is the DNS name that you need to assign. This is not a DNS name. This is just a prefix they will use. Member cluster. You can either add member clusters later after fleet is created or you can add it at the time of fleet creation. Let's add it now because I already have two clusters ready. So I will hit the add button right now and let's wait for it. So this will actually give me a list of all the Kubernetes clusters that I have already created. I have two Kubernetes clusters, AKS cluster right now. And you will notice they belong to a different resource group and they even belong to a different location, but they belong to same subscription and same tenant. That's right. So I'm going to add both these clusters here. You can assign a name to them. Like for example, I say name of this cluster is cluster 001 and name for this cluster is cluster 002. Keeping a short name, I prefer that. Also, you can specify the update group for these clusters. You can provide this update group information later as well. Okay. Right now, let's leave it. I will implement the update strategies later on. Right now, my focus is just to show you how to create the fleet manager service. No tags. Let's validate everything. So this is what it's going to add. I'm not adding any groups, but I'm adding two member clusters right now. Please remember, if you try to create a fleet manager without members, it will be created faster, like within one or one minute or even less than that. But if you are adding a members there as well, then it might take more than one minute or maybe probably more than two or three minutes as well. So we will not wait for this creation to complete now. I will go back to the presentation and we'll continue discussing few more points. And then we'll come back here and we'll check the status of our Kubernetes fleet. Okay, so you can see fleet manager creation is currently started. Let's get back to the presentation. So to revise again, Kubernetes fleet manager is a managed service which will deploy a hub cluster and that hub cluster will be used for managing all the member clusters. Okay. Now, this is going to be the architecture. So you have a fleet, a hub cluster, which is another AKS cluster, a single worker node will be deployed initially and multiple member clusters can be registered there. You can add member cluster at the time of fleet creation or you can add it later on. As of now, there is a limit of 20 clusters, 20 members in single hub or single fleet. Uh, okay, so architecture wise, it looks like this. Now, these are some current limitations or current features. Uh, so like AKS clusters can be from different resource group, but with the same subscription or they could be from different subscription, but the same Azure AD tenant Azure AD is now rebranded as Microsoft Entra ID. So same Entra ID, same tenant it should be, but it could be a different region, different subscription or different resource group. As of now, now it is uh, October 2023. Up to 20 AKS clusters can be registered as a member for the same fleet resource. So if you have more than 20 AKS clusters, if you have 25, 30, 50 clusters, you need to probably create two different fleet. Okay. Once a cluster is joined to a fleet resource, a member cluster custom resource is created on the fleet and couple of more CRDs, custom resource definitions will be created on both member cluster and the fleet hub, both of them. I will show you once our cluster is ready. Once our fleet resource is ready, I will show you some of the custom resource definitions over there. So what are the features? Some of these points we have already discussed. Number one, it enables centralized management of all your clusters at scale. It provides a managed hub cluster that takes care of upgrades and cluster configuration for you. Small note. As of now, the cluster configuration feature is very limited. As I told you a few minutes back, Microsoft is already working on this feature where you can use desired state configuration. You can create a configuration of Kubernetes cluster and then cluster will be created. Member clusters will be created from the hub. So this feature will get added in a couple of months. Configuration propagation. 
that allow you to use the policies and override object across fleet management management clusters. Uh, this is also currently work in progress, but one thing I'm going to show you in our demo, how to use the propagation. Just a small hint I'll give you what about to what I'm about to show you later on. I will create some Kubernetes resource on the hub cluster and then I will propagate it on the member cluster. So I will deploy a Kubernetes manifest on the hub cluster and I will show you how to apply it on the member cluster as well. Okay, interesting feature. North South load balancer for orchestrating the traffic across orchestrating the traffic across multiple member cluster. So you might create a load balancer that will take certain traffic to one cluster and certain traffic to another cluster. That is another feature available in Kubernetes Fleet Manager from Microsoft Azure. About the resource propagation, you will have to create a custom resource definition, cluster resource placement object where uh, you will, you know, kind of uh, set up a Kubernetes resource and you can specify where this particular resource to be applied on which member cluster. You can specify that in a typical Kubernetes style manifest like the one I have discussed or I have shown you here. You can see that, right? Okay. So resource propagation, I'm going to show you a demo on that. But before that, let me just go and check if our Kubernetes uh, fleet manager is ready right now. I can see many of the things are internally done, like uh, the, the fleet creation and the role assignment is done. Some of the components are still in progress. Let me refresh it. Yeah, it's still work in progress. Fine, no worries. Uh, what I will do is I will show you the hub, hub cluster. If I now click on Kubernetes clusters or Kubernetes services, you will notice these are the two AKS clusters I have pre-created. You will notice the Kubernetes version number for them is different. One is Kubernetes version 1.25 and the other one is Kubernetes 1.26. And then I have this hub network, which is version 1.25.11. This is one currently getting provisioned. So it may not be ready as of now. Okay. Our fleet is not ready yet. Okay, here the cluster at least is showing a status that it's already up and running. Let me check if it can detect any kind of workload here. There is nothing as of now. Okay, we haven't deployed anything in here. Nothing is there. These are the services which are already by default deployed by AKS. Let's see the custom resources, CRDs. So there are a couple of CRDs automatically deployed by the fleet manager, like for example, a CRD called member cluster, which is basically a list of all the member clusters in your particular hub. Okay. Endpoint, endpoint, which is used for service, internal service, external service or export service, etc. Lot many custom objects are created here anyways. Okay. Deployment is still in progress. Oh, yes. Just now it finished the deployment. So let's go to the fleet manager. So this is my Kubernetes fleet manager, which is currently my fleet one is the name of fleet. And this is the resource group, which is fleet RG and everything is fine. Let's go and check the member clusters. Right now I can see the member clusters here. Let's see how many are there. These are the two member clusters now, cluster 002 and cluster 001. These are the two member clusters. Both of them are up and running. Fine. Let's see how do we connect to them. If you need to connect to these clusters, uh, all three clusters, the hub cluster and these two member clusters, what we need to do basically. Uh, you will have to ensure few things, okay? Like, let me just open my terminal. I'm using WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. You can use something similar to this or you can use Azure CLI from your command prompt PowerShell window or you can use Cloud Shell from Azure portal as well. I have everything set up here. I will show you which version of Azure CLI I am using right now. So AZ version, let's see which version is installed. I'm using a latest version of Azure CLI, which is 2.53.1, okay? In case you need to install it on uh, a typical uh, uh, Ubuntu system or uh, what we call it, Debian systems, you can use command like this, apt install, I will just, you know, 
to install the latest version, I will just try reinstall command and here I'll type Azure CLI. Okay, this will make sure that your version of Azure CLI is latest up to date. Okay, so I'm just reinstalling it and looks like it's the same version actually. Okay, 2.53.1. That's the same version it is installing right now. Okay, yeah, it's the same thing. Anyways, uh, it also requires some packages to be or some package repo to be set. Okay, fine. It depends on what operating system which Linux distribution you might be using. So I have the required Azure CLI installed. Other than Azure CLI, it also requires another utility called kubectl. You can install kubectl using command az aks install CLI. And you need kube login, another utility that allows you to log in using Azure Active Directory uh, service principle or Azure Active Directory identity. Okay, looks like I should not have run. I, I... Okay, fine. It's done. <coughs> Installation was not needed. I was already up to date. My version of Azure CLI was already up to date. But this command will allow me to just update it in case a newer update is available. Fine. It's ready. So I have this version of Azure CLI installed 2.53. Then let's see which version of kubectl I'm using right now. Right now, I'm using kubectl version 1.25.1. That, that's fine. You should have latest version, basically, 1.28 or something. Okay. And I have kube, uh, kube login also installed. Now, what I will do, I will first try to get the credentials for the fleet. Let's create a separate directory here. I'll call this directory as fleet config. Okay. And inside this fleet config, Let's get the credentials. So az fleet get credentials. Okay, and here we need the fleet name. Now, what is the name of my fleet right now? Uh, so name of the fleet is my fleet one. So here I'll say my fleet one. In which resource group? It is in a resource group. Let's take the name of the resource group from here and let's see. The name of my resource group is fleet rg that's fine so i'll write fleet rg and then we need to specify the file name i'll say it's a fleet okay just fleet or if you want you can just add a extension like dot yml but that's not required anyways so let's say fleet so i'm just downloading a credential for the hub cluster basically so yes that's it let's press enter and wait for it this will get the credentials to connect to the hub cluster and it will store those credentials in a YAML file with name fleet in the current directory. If you do ls, you can see the file. Can you see the file now? That's the file. This is a typical cube config file basically. Fine. Now after this, this is how you get the credentials for the fleet hub, right? But if you want to get the credentials for the member cluster, you have to use az aks get credential. Here, you need to provide the resource group name and the cluster name. So let's see how many clusters we have right now. I'll just do this. AK list output table. This will give me a list of all Kubernetes clusters. So right now, I have these many clusters, right? Now, az aks get credentials. And the first cluster I wish to connect is cluster 001, which is in a resource group called cluster 1RG. And I want to store the credentials for this one into a file, let's say member 1. So this will create a new file member 1. Similarly, I will use member 2, cluster 2. As a member too. So now I have got total three configuration files. Let me show you all of them. Okay. So there are total three configuration files. If I use configuration file fleet, it will allow me to connect to the hub cluster directly. If I use member one, it will connect me to the first AKS cluster. And if I connect to member two, it will allow me to connect to second member cluster. How do I switch between them? Let's use an environment variable kube config. Let's set the kube config environment variable to 
a file called fleet this one what happens now is if i now connect to kubernetes cluster i'll just say kubectl config get hyphen context wait a second oh sorry it's a plural get context you will see i'm connected to a hub network or hub cluster what i what if i change this into let's say member 1 okay so i'm now using a cube config file member 1 if i now try get context command it says that i am now connected to cluster 1 and what if i change this to member 2 then it will allow me to connect to a different cluster cluster 02 so did you notice i have credentials to connect with all the three clusters the hub cluster which is created by fleet and the two member clusters let's do one thing let's connect back to the hub cluster so this is where i'm connected to the hub cluster okay and yes we are on hub cluster kubectl get crd crd stand for custom resource definitions in crd stands for custom resource definition here just a minute Okay, so we are using CRD, custom resource definition. So let's see what happens when we use CRD here. These are the custom resource definitions which Fleet Manager has deployed in here. So let me show you an example here. There is a custom resource definition called member clusters. How do I use this? I can just say kubectl get member cluster. You can use either the singular form or multiple form plural form so you can say member cluster or you can say member clusters like this so there are two clusters currently assigned as a member here and i have assigned these members or i have registered them 30 minutes 30 minutes back what is more you can actually describe them like any other kubernetes resource so let's try to describe one of the member cluster cluster 001 and when i press enter i'll show you here what happens so these are the history here like member cluster is added and let's see the labels it has been applied uh, which which it has applied so these are the labels like fleet.azure.com location central india so this particular cluster is from central india location and its resource group is this it belongs to this subscription in case you have kubernetes clusters deployed in multiple subscription then you can you know filter particular member from a particular subscription using this filter or this label okay addition to this group name can also be applied as a label but right now we didn't apply any grouping here so we'll do that now so let's go for the member clusters and let's apply a different group name for them so what i'm planning to do now let's say this particular cluster here assign an update group for it let's say my cluster 002 is my QA cluster assign a group name and for 001 let's say I can either select an existing one or provide a new one 001 is my dev cluster so I have created two different group one group for dev cluster one group for QA cluster you can actually put both the cluster in the same group as well but I prefer putting them in a different group right now so I have one QA cluster and one dev cluster Let's see whether these things can be detected from his here from the describe command. So you will notice the role of binding is updated. Okay, this was actually an old event. Let's see the labels now. Okay, label is not updated yet. I was expecting label to be update, updated or group name to be updated here. It might be updated somewhere else then. Let's see. Location operation update fleet beta 1 finalizers okay no it's not mentioned here yet i guess eventually it will be updated here okay 
So let's say repeat again. Just wanted to see all the labels. No label is not updated yet. Okay, that's fine. We will check it after some time. Okay, so group assignment is done. You can see the group assignment here, at, at least in the portal, it is updated right now. Okay, fine. Let's now do one thing. We are connected to this Kubernetes cluster and we are right now connected to the fleet manager. Okay, from where we can access both cluster 001 and cluster 002. So what I will do now, let's do one thing. Let's deploy some sample application in here. What I will do is I already am using this particular Kubernetes cluster here. So just a minute, I have some application created here. Wait a second, I have a sample application somewhere here. No, no, not this actually, I guess I have a sample application. This one here. Yeah. Can you see this? What I will do is I will create a namespace. And inside the namespace, I will create a config map. Let's take this for example. Let's go back to the terminal and let's create a file app1.yml. And this is what I'm planning to deploy. So, this is a sample workload that I'm going to deploy now on the hub cluster. Apply hyphen f. And then what I'll do here, I will just add here app1.yml. Here it is, okay, fine. So this is updated now. And if I now try this kubectl get cm, which stands for configuration map from the namespace app one, you will see it here. Okay, so inside namespace app one, there is my config deployed. Let's do one thing. Let's add, let's do the split pane. I'm not sure whether it will load. Okay, it's actually using a PowerShell window. I don't want a PowerShell window here. I want the same WSL environment. Let's open a new WSL environment in a new tab. So this is a different tab right now. Okay, and this is going to be member one. Okay, this is where I will connect to member one. So the same folder I should be in. Fleet conf, right? So, fleet conf. What I'll do here, I will connect with cube config equal to member one. Okay, so here if I write cube ctl config get context, you will see here I'm connected to cluster one. And this one, I will just rename this tab just for a reference. This is the fleet one. Okay, so this will give me a reference where I am right now. So here, if I run this command kubectl get cm hyphen n app one, it shows me this configuration. But if I try the same command here in the member cluster, let's see what happens. No resource found in app one namespace. Rather, there is actually no namespace with name app one. Did you notice that? There is no such namespace. Am I right? Yes. And of course, this config map do not even exist in member cluster one. Let's create one more. This is going to be member two. And inside member two also, I will use the plate conf. But here I will connect to cube config equal to member two. So here also I will run the same command kubectl get con uh, configuration map config map from a namespace app one look i'm not able to even connect i guess i did not even got the credentials for member two probably how do i know if it is their credential file yeah there is a credential file i can see member two credential file here kube oh i made a spelling mistake Cube config f was missing in there. Okay, fine. Let's try this again. So here it is now. You can see no resource found. So member one and member two do not have this config map, but fleet has this config map. Now I'm showing you a demo on how to perform resource propagation. What is resource propagation? Resource propagation means you deploy Kubernetes manifest, you deploy Kubernetes workload on the hub cluster, and from hub cluster, you apply to member clusters.
So what I'm going to do now. So here we need a config file. Now I have ready made, I have a ready made config file created here. I will show you that file. Here it is. So you will notice here it's using a custom resource definition called placement.kubernetesplate.io slash v1 beta1. That's the API version. Kind of resource is cluster resource placement. Name is app1. Namespace name here is not required. Then spec section what resource to select. Now I use the trick. I am saying any group but version number should be API version should be v1. Kind of resource I am trying to move is a namespace and name of the namespace is app1. Now please remember one thing. You can only provide cluster scoped resources not the namespace scoped resources. But for namespace scoped resources like pods, deployment services you have a trick. Instead of moving deployment, replica or pod which you cannot do anyways, you should instead move or sync entire namespace. So what happens if I select a namespace app1 here? It means select the namespace and all the objects inside that namespace. So it is like copying an entire folder with all its content. Fine. Policy for the placement. Right now I am not selecting it by label. Instead I am saying that I want to just copy everything to only first cluster which is cluster 001. Okay. So let's try this policy first. So this is the policy definition I am going to create here in my terminal. Let's create the policy one. This is the policy I am planning to use. I have specified where I want to propagate this. Explicitly specified which cluster. Now here just like normal Kubernetes apply command, kubectl apply command. Let's apply policy 1.yml and wait for it. Done. Good. Let's check the status. How to get the status? I'll just say kubectl get cluster resource placement. So cluster resource placement, you can see there is app 1 and it is already applied. It is already in sync. That's great. Let's go and check member 1. I will just try the same old command that failed earlier. And now can you see the my config here? Interesting, right? Okay. Let's see whether it will work for member 2. For member 2, it is still saying no resource found. But for member 1, it says there is a resource. You can see the my config with data element 4. Now, what happens if I don't want this? What I can do is similar to apply, I will use delete button. Okay. And now let's go to member 1. Repeat the same old command, and you will notice. The config map my config is now gone. The root CR, CRT is still there. That means namespace is still there. It won't delete the namespace. Let me show you this. Okay. So, yeah, it has deleted namespace as well. That's great. So, namespace is also deleted and all the resources it has created under that namespace is also deleted. I can't see that namespace anywhere. anymore. What if I need to make some changes? Let's change the policy. Let's create a new policy, policy2.yaml. And in this time, in this policy2.yaml, I'm going to do some change. Here, the placement type will not be fixed. I will rather just delete this. Okay, I will delete the cluster name as well. Or I can provide multiple cluster name, cluster 001 and cluster 002. Okay, I will do that instead. How to undo? Okay. Alt U. Oh, sorry. This shortcut doesn't work anywhere. Okay. Let's do one thing. Let's say I want this to be deployed on both the clusters. It is also possible to use label selector here, but I did not test the label selector feature. So let's say I want this to be deployed to both cluster 1 and cluster 2. Let's save this and apply this. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm just applying a wrong policy. Let's apply policy 2 instead. Policy 2 applied. 
let's check the status of this policy now so it is applied right now no status is unknown why it is unknown yeah it is applied now so for some small time it may not be applied to both the clusters let's see the status now i can see the config map on member two and i can also see the config map on member one as well okay app one is now created and i can see the config map this is really a great feature so if you have to manage multiple kubernetes cluster and deploy your application or workload on more than one cluster at a time you instead deploy it to the hub cluster and from hub cluster you propagate it to required clusters of your choice okay that is one aspect of it okay you can try this demo i will i will just share my uh, sample configuration with you later on on my github repository okay so all this configuration you will get there okay next thing this is just one of the many features another feature we will explore now is uh, i will show you the update strategy now so for that update strategy let's go back to kubernetes cluster and let's review which version of kubernetes we are using for both of them we are using kubernetes version 1.25 and 1.26 now because of some reason we need to update them to kubernetes version 1.27 instead so how to do that let's go to the fleet manager from the console from the uh, azure portal and let's go for the multi cluster update here we are both of them are configured right now okay so member clusters are configured let's do the multi cluster update i'm creating a new run let's call it run one you can give it any other name and let's do one thing to make it faster i will say i just want to select the node images okay oh, wait a second node images might already be latest i just have to verify that once okay this member cluster for example i will just try command kubectl get nodes okay so both these nodes are kubernetes version 1.25.11 let's try the same command on this one the node images right now are these like these images are kubernetes 1.26.6 and this one is kubernetes 1.25.11 so let's update node images to latest for both of them i want to update it either one by one that is first update one uh, update group and then go to another update group that is one by one or you can use stages in the stages you can specify like whether you want to run it parallel or rather it will give you more control over it okay you can even add a pause duration like complete the dev environment take a pause of let's say two hours and then start with the next one let's do the one by one which does not require any kind of configuration change and it will be like first one group then second group like that create so i created a new run okay it's not started yet so this is the run you can just create the configuration and as and when required you can go and click the start button let's start so now the update run has been launched successfully we can check this job status right now the update job is currently running you will notice it here the job is already running the status is running and you can see it here there are total two clusters okay and looks like this one is skipped i'm not sure why it was skipped basically let's update the status again i'll refresh it and let's see the status looks like it is skipped and this one is not started this update process is actually a process that takes lot of time okay kubernetes update process takes a lot longer time basically okay so this is already launched <coughs> sorry let's go back to the fleet cluster kubectl get all there are no resources in the default namespace right now let's explore some more kubernetes custom objects custom kubernetes objects right now gets crd okay these are the crds right now member cluster role binding snapshot and lot many other job ctl get jobs 
from all namespaces. Nothing is there. Okay, fine. AZ fleet. This is a CLI that you can use to, you know, run few commands from CLI. Whatever you do from the Azure portal, most of these things you can do from CLI as well. Okay. So, like for example, you can create a new uh, Kubernetes fleet manager from Azure CLI using AZ fleet create command or you can delete the fleet, you can get the credential, we use this command already and you can update the existing fleet using update command here as well. Let's check more details about the update command. So what we can do, we can just provide the name and the resource group to update the existing fleet. Fine. Already an update is happening on Kubernetes cluster, so we should just wait for it to complete basically. So I don't know why, but both of them are skipped right now. It did not update them basically. They did not even start it. So node images are already latest, I guess. And node images means the OS version basically. Let me just check. OS wide. Okay, so this is already the kernel version 6.2. Okay, it's not Kubernetes version. For Kubernetes version, we'll do one thing. We'll run an update with control plane. I'll show you how to do that. Let's create a run. Let's call it run 2. And here, oh, oh I got it. It's because it was 1.26, right? Let me check what was selected here for the run one. Okay, it was node image, that's why. I'll delete this and I'll create a new one. Let's create a new job. This time I will update the Kubernetes API version. Run 2. I wish to update my Kubernetes version to 1.27.1. .1. Okay. And this should be one by one. Let's see what happens. This will update both the node images and API version. Okay. And let's start this. Started successfully. It's now started or it's now in a running state. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so one is running. Okay, great. So it is now updating my second cluster, unfortunately, instead of first. Maybe this is the first one that I added in a sequence. Current Kubernetes version number was 1.26.6 and it will be very soon updated to a newer version. So let's see the status here. Okay, so looks like it's updating right now, but the node are currently up and ready. Kubernetes version number here is 1.26.6 and very soon it will be updated to 1.27. What I will do is I will go back to the fleet and inside the fleet I will try command kubectl get cluster members. Let's see how many members are there. I guess I made a spelling mistake. Cluster members. member cluster sorry so there are two member clusters right now let's try to describe them if i describe them i might get some additional details about them like whether they are currently in update process okay so the description is available for all of them right now so yes operation update is currently happening it's a member cluster fine Let's wait for it. Let's wait for the process to complete. This takes time basically. You can even check the progress by simply going to cluster 2 and in the overview tab here, let's see if it is showing any kind of update progress right now. So wait a second. Yes, I can see it here. It is currently getting upgraded to the newer version. Version 1.27.1 is the target version number. So let's go back and verify that once again. 
So the old version number was 1.26.6 and the new version number should be 1.27.1 now. Let's wait for it. I can also try command kubectl cluster info to check that. So cluster info is saying this is the cluster information. This is the API version number, right? Uh, what other way to do this? No, I guess there is only one way to know this. Use the get node command. It's the process is not completed yet. It's still going on. It's still run. So let's take it. Let's give it some time. Okay, the process. Still running. We will check. I'll, I'll, I'll just, uh, you know, kind of pause the recording for few minutes, couple of minutes. And when it's complete, I will take you back to the screen. Okay, now, so I have completed one cluster update as you can see from the run log. One cluster is completed, the other cluster it is working on right now. So let's see. I can see here one cluster at least is completed. The other one has failed. Let me check why it has failed. Might be some reason why uh, the cluster update has failed. Okay, so what is it? Operation not allowed message upgrading Kubernetes cluster available upgrade for this Kubernetes cluster version 1.25.11 is not supported because it's too old. You should first update it to 1.26.3 or 1.26.6 and then upgrade it to 1.27. So that's basically the issue and I may have to uh, modify and run an update job for this particular Kubernetes cluster now. So what I will do is I will create another job and I will target that particular Kubernetes cluster here. Run 3. I want to upgrade it to 1.26.6. Okay. The node image and the Kubernetes version. And here I'll do it only for the stage. Here let me add the particular Kubernetes cluster here. So stage name. Let's call it dev. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Dev. Okay, and update group. I just want to update the dev cluster. Let me verify first whether I am in the right cluster uh, selection here. Let's verify whether it is really the dev group or QA group. So let's go back. I just opened a new tab right now. And in this new tab, my fleet one. And let's see the member clusters for my fleet one. Wait a second. Yeah, here it is. Uh, looks like this was QA. This one was dev. So I was on a right track. I want to update only the dev cluster. Okay. Dev name and dev cluster only. Create. Okay. So sequence number one, update the dev cluster. If you want, you can provide another sequence as well. Create. Now I'm just going to run another job. So this one has failed. One completed, one did not complete. Another one is now just launch. Okay. So let's wait for it. Job number three. Okay. I have created the job, but, but I did not start it. So let's hit the start button to manually start launching the job. And let's see the progress here. It's already running. Okay, fine. Great. Let's go back to the presentation. And let's try to understand some of the things here that we did. The first thing that I, I have already done in my demo is cluster resource placement object. Cluster resource placement is basically a custom resource definition available in Fleet Manager. Uh, it's a mechanism that allows you to control how cluster scoped resources are deployed on Kubernetes clusters, member Kubernetes clusters. You can select them by group, version, kind, and name these properties you can target a cluster by either specifying the custom resource name or the member group ID. okay so we were talking about cluster resource placement object the one that we deployed right now 
So I deployed it. I made the resource selection. I selected the target resource. Okay, everything was done there. Uh, I will show you what I deployed here in the terminal again. Yeah. So the file that I was using here was this one policy 2.yml. This was the policy. I selected the cluster, member cluster where I wish to deploy them. Okay. So that kind of propagation I did already. Okay. Resource placement object. Then. So this actually allows me to deploy it anywhere. You can also deploy a multi container, multi cluster service similarly. There is a, another CRD object you can use here, which is a multi cluster service object, which you can use for the load balancing part. Next thing, the update. We just run the update object. In the update, either you can do the update sequentially or you can run the update in stages. My earlier update was sequential, which failed unfortunately. But my next update is stage based and there I have selected only one stage, the dev environment. So let's go and check the status of that particular update here. So this is the run 3 which I launched recently. Let's hit the refresh button and see what is the update or what is the updated progress here. It's still running. Okay, fine. The update process takes time, obviously. It's still running. Let's go and check this progress from the terminal here. So kubectl get nodes and okay, I'm connected to which cluster here right now? Member 2. It is already up to date with version 1.27.1. 1. About member 1, for member 1 it is still, oh yeah, it is now updated. You can see member 1 was originally 1.25.11. And it is now updated to version 1.26.6. So it is updated properly right now. That's good. Now that we have everything set here, update is done proper, uh, perfectly run. Let's discuss here. So we created an update group. Update group is where we keep all the clusters. Remember the limitation. Each member cluster can be member of only one update group, not more than one. You can create a staged update where you can add stage 1, then pause, then stage 2, then pause, stage 3 and so on. Run is the actual job which will, you know, run the update. Okay. And other limitations, you can either upgrade only the node images or upgrade node images and control plane together. Rather, when you update the control plane, updation of node images mandatory when you update the control plane. Create a run. You can create a run. We already did this and we can select either the sequential approach or the staged approach. Here. These are the permissions or these are the privileges you need to have under or on your uh, specific uh, as your user or as your service principal, whichever might be using for creating the fleet. So right now I used my user login, my Azure subscription user login. Uh, it was a owner sub owner privileges. I had owner privileges on my subscription. That means I can do all these operations. Uh, but remember, as a best practice, we follow a best practice, a security best practice called just enough admin. What does it mean? If you are assigning a particular task to one of your team member, let's say I have a team member and I have assigned a task of Kubernetes fleet management to a particular person, then there is no need to assign that person any kind of uh, owner privileges at all. Instead of giving that person owner privilege, owner role, what I should do, I should cherry pick certain privileges which are required. Like in order to perform fleet management, a person need to have a user or sub, uh, service principal need to have container service fleet read write access, container service fleet member read write, fleet membership read write, manage cluster read write a list cluster user credential action and list credential action only these privileges you can even you know kind of remove some of these if you think like you are not actually expecting that person to perform a specific operation like you can skip the uh, you can skip this list credential action right you want that person to be able to just create the kubernetes management fleet but getting the credential for it 
should be done by another person. So, you can just assign those privileges to another person as well. Then you need to have the CLI latest version and you need to enable the optional feature for the fleet management. The features need to be enabled for your Azure CLI and you need to have the cube login installed. This is how it actually interacts with your Kubernetes cluster. Your Kubernetes cluster is already AAD integrated. The fleet cluster, the hub cluster already uses AAD integration feature. So you are not logging in with the traditional way of cube config, but here it is using the Azure Active Directory login as well. Okay, so this is about it. Let's see the status now. I guess it is now updated to 1.26.6. So let's go back and check the progress here. Run 3 status is completed. That's great. Now once it is updated, what you can do next is you can just create another update run and update this cluster now to the newer version. Or what I can do is this is my run 1. Let me restart it. Okay. Let's see what happens now. Earlier time it failed, this time again trying to launch it and looks like it's now running. But you know what will happen? This is already up to date. One is already up to date, right? So it will ignore it and the other cluster it will run now. Let me refresh it now. This one was already completed, so it won't run again. But cluster one was not already completed, so it will now try to update it. Looks like the current version number here is not correct. It should be 26.6 actually. Anyways, let's see what happens if I run this now. The status is currently in running mode. Okay. Let's wait for it. Should be done. Anyways, coming back to this, Kubernetes Fleet Manager is a very interesting service. It's a managed service, so you don't have to worry about the infrastructure changes. What makes it even more interesting is it uses a hub a separate hub cluster. So, of course, please remember the pricing part of it. You will be actually charged little more for that hub uh, cluster. Of course, right now it is in a preview and most of the preview features are available uh, either at pre of cost or there will be a nominal charges for them. But as soon as this becomes a generally available service, which I believe there would be a lot of additional features included in it by Microsoft before they make it generally available. And then the cost, they will disclose how much will be the cost. And just like any other Kubernetes uh, Azure services, I believe Fleet Manager will also be available in multiple pricing tiers. Like basic pricing tier will provide the basic features to you with a lower cost and then premium plan where it will give you lots of additional features as well. Right now under preview, there are no separate pricing plan as such because it's under testing or it's under development right now. Better word is it is still under development. So there are alternatives of course. Kubernetes fleet management as a concept is not new. Kubernetes fleet management on Azure on cloud is the new concept. Okay. There are other vendors which already provide like Rancher, for example, can be used for multiple Kubernetes cluster management. On cloud, this is a service which is available from Microsoft. Okay. So, some of the best practices here that you can follow, right? This is a preview feature. So, you should not use this type of uh, services in production environment, but you can experiment with it. Okay. Uh, another thing is, the cluster that it provisions, the hub cluster, please remember once it becomes generally available, the pricing will include the cost for the hub cluster. Okay. It is possible to upgrade the hub cluster or it is possible to let's say update the Kubernetes version used by the hub cluster as well. Rather, most of the operations can easily be done via CLI. Okay. Like for example, AZ fleet update. Okay, let's try to update the entire fleet. Oh, looks like there are two parameters missing. The resource group and the name. Let's first see how many fleet we have. List command allows me to, you know, have a look at the resource group name. So, let's call it fleet RG. Oh, wait, one more thing is needed. Name of the fleet. 
so let's say the name of the fleet is my fleet one and the resource group is fleet rg now with this update has started now and let's see the details here i'll see if i can get additional details here using show details okay there is no show details here let's check that from the portal fleet manager fleet manager just run the update on it let's have a look okay it is succeeded everything is fine member clusters i can see them from here all the member clusters from the list provisioning state and update group yes it's there let's check the additional properties okay so scroll down okay this is fine let's go and check the kubernetes version number for the fleet here i'll try kubectl kubectl get nodes and let's see which version of kubernetes it's using right now it's still version 2.1.25.11 point, looks like it just did the update on the uh, fleet manager api by the way update is still happening i guess update process has not completed here the job that i was running earlier the job is still running you can see it here one of the two cluster completed that was anyways completed earlier let's and the other one will take some time anyways so before we close this session now uh, let me show you how to do a cleanup operation here cleanup operation basically means that how do i delete everything now so two steps two steps step number one what you should do now i won't be able to do that right now because update is happening update is running what you should do is you should first go to the fleet go to the member clusters and then go and remove these member clusters from the fleet okay so select them all right and click this button remove this will not delete aks cluster but this will simply delink or disconnect these kubernetes clusters from the fleet manager i won't be able to remove them now because there is some update process in progress and i won't be able to remove them now once the update complete i will hit this remove button and disconnect them from fleet manager after that after it is disconnected please remember the disconnect process also might take 5 to 10 minutes after all the member clusters are disconnected and your fleet is now back to zero members then go and delete the fleet okay and then whether or not to delete the aks member clusters later on is your choice rather you can delete them as soon as you remove them disconnect them from the fleet manager okay so that's it for the session okay you have anything any feedback and all you can share it with us and uh, i have already shared with you in initially my linkedin profile id you can visit it you can join me on the linkedin and uh, that's it for it thank you for watching this session and have a great learning thank you very much